What's up everybody, this is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob. This is Whiskey Review number 23. Um, what I have for you right now is bottles that I've bought over the years that um, I don't think I'm gonna buy again and I don't think I'm gonna review uh, over the, the next little while. I might, I'm gonna change my mind at some point. I might try one of these think I was maybe a little too harsh on them and give them another shot but at the moment I'm not happy with these purchases I wasn't at the time um, they just didn't do it for me for whatever reason so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why I felt that way I'm gonna start with the Titan over here the Glenlivet 25 year old um, this summer that just passed I had a my first son well, my wife actually did. I didn't have her, him. Um, but as a celebra celebratory bottle, I bought the Glenlivet 25-year-old. It comes in this exceptionally beautiful case. Uh, it has a nice booklet that goes along with it. Um, and the bottle is pretty sleek itself. I'll just get this out for you if I can. Okay, so that's what she looks like. All right, um, it was a good whiskey. And I emphasize the word good because when I'm spending $320, $350 on a bottle, I expect great, I expect exceptional. That was not the case here. And I was rather disappointed because I believe that the Glenlivet 18 year old is a really good whiskey. So for whatever reason, the 25 year old fell short for me. Maybe I'll try it again, like I said, in the future and it'll change my mind. Maybe my expectations were too high, but $350, $350 for a bottle, you should be getting a pretty, pretty solid product. Um, it was sweet, it had your typical space side profile, um, not a lot of character. Not a ton of character. It was very light on the palate. There wasn't a creaminess. There wasn't a syrupy texture to it. It was a very light whiskey. For 25 years, I expect more substance. I expect more character. I expect something a lot better. Um, so I will never spend $350 on this particular bottle again if my mind is not changed beforehand. And what I mean by that is if I don't if I'm not offered it somewhere else or somebody gives me a shot at a bar of it uh, and it blows my mind, um, I don't think I'll be going to buy another bottle of this. It is hard to come by, okay? These do not uh, come up very often. 25 year old is very difficult to come by. If you do find it and you're extremely curious like I was, um, maybe buy it and store it keep it, it's probably more, worth more as a collector's item than it will be uh, tasting it because it's, it's bound to disappoint in my opinion. Sorry if I've offended anybody, that's my humble opinion. Um, $350 is a lot of money, okay? Um, if you're gonna spend that kind of money, you'd expect great things. The box is upset at me, obviously. All right, um, another disappointment was the Crown Royal XR. Okay, I have the bottle in here. Great presentation, okay. No age statement, it's $180. It's one of the more expensive Canadian whiskeys. Um, I have reviewed the XR Blue this one was from the water, the Waterloo distillery that burnt down. It was better than the blue, I will say. I won't buy another bottle of it. I believe I actually returned my second bottle of it. Um, and the only reason I did that is because there was a time where I was connect, uh, collecting Canadian whiskey. Um, but having tried one of the bottles, I'm, it, dis, it discouraged me and I decided to return the second one. Okay. Um, the Macallan 12 year old, okay? This is not available in Ontario. It's very difficult to come by across Canada. 
you can pick it up in the States still. For whatever reason, the United States still has a ton of H statement McAllen. This one is, I wrote it down here, $52. Yeah, $52 American, so about $70 Canadian if by the exchange rate. Um, it's overrated. It's not overpriced. That's that's a fair price. What I will say is it's overrated. It's not the best 12-year-old on the market. I think the Glendronic 12-year-old is 10 times better than this. Um, it, it had some qualities to it that I wasn't crazy about. Um, I've heard great things. I didn't have an opportunity to try it when it was available in Ontario. My brother went to Florida, picked up a bottle for me at uh, Total Wine. And like I said, it was $52. Would I buy another bottle for $52? Maybe to give it another chance, but there's better out there. Okay, so it's definitely overrated in my books, the McAllen 12. Okay, um, $130, $120 is the Glenfiddich 18 year old. Okay, this is bottled at 40%. So out of all the bottles that I'm gonna talk about, this is the only one bottled at 40%. Uh, shame on you, Glenfiddich. <laughs> You guys make a ton of money. You're the leading, what the second leading distillery in Scotland. Uh, you can afford to bottle your 18-year-old Scotch at 43% at minimum. Okay, at minimum. All right. Um, it was okay. Am I gonna spend another $120 to buy a Glenfiddich 18-year-old? No. I could definitely. I definitely prefer to buy the 15 year old actually it's it's much better so big disappointment it does get better near the end of the bottle the banana I guess from the bourbon influence the banana starts to come out more near the bottom like the banana flavors and and smells but near the top it's very closed off it's very um, I don't know simplistic in my opinion okay so not worth your buy Balvini 12 year old. If I had a dollar for everybody that told me how good the Balvini 12 year old was, uh, this is $130. It is not chill filtered, uh, no added color, I believe. And it's bottled at 47.8%. So it's, it's an expensive bottling, okay? It does cost them a lot of money to bottle. But for 12 years old, I'm not spending $130 unless it's incredible. I won't do it again, that's for sure. Um, Belveni is one of those things where you either love it or you hate it. I've talked to many people that absolutely love it, adore it. I've talked to many people that absolutely hate it. Um, I guess I'm somewhere in the middle. I, I wasn't crazy about the Portwood, the 21 year old, and I, I definitely wasn't crazy about this. They both kind of disappointed me. I expected way better things. So um, I do hear there are several other bottlings of Belvini that are excellent as well. I will give them all a shot. They all get their fair shake. But for me, the 12 year old at $130 is not worth it. Okay, last but not least, some of you guys may have heard of this. Uh, it's an American company that claims to make Canadian whiskey. Masterson's is the brand. Uh, this is a 10 year old straight rye whiskey. Um, like I said, it's it's an American whiskey. It's slotted in with Canadian whiskeys, I guess because it's 100% rye. Uh, but we've gone over in my past videos that not all Canadian whiskeys have rye whiskey in them. Uh, most Canadian whiskeys are blends. In order to be considered a Canadian whiskey, it needs to be made in Canada. So this should not consider itself a Canadian whiskey. Um, it's, I believe, $110. And for a 10-year-old whiskey, it's definitely not worth it. It's bottled at 45%. Um, there's zero sweetness to it whatsoever. It's very, very strong. It's uh, palate numbing. Um, I definitely won't buy another bottle of this. If you have a difference of opinion, feel free to write a comment underneath. 
Um, I hope I didn't offend anybody by doing this this video, but this is just my honest opinion. And my goal is to influence people to get the best bang for their buck. And if I can help a few people out, I'm happy I did that. Um, if I offended anybody, I apologize. But like I said, it's just my opinion, okay? If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. On Twitter, I'm at whiskey underscore in underscore the underscore six. Six the number, not the word. And then on Instagram, I'm at whiskey in the six. Again, six the number, not the word. Cheers, guys.